Welcome back to Enshrouded. Today we're going to be unlocking a legendary weapon, which is actually one of the best weapons you can get early on in the game. We'll also be upgrading our armor set, unlocking the wizard's armor set, as well as the alchemist who can craft us potions. We'll also be defeating our first shroud root boss as well, among lots of other tips and tricks. But first we need to start out by crafting ourselves the best starter armor set. And since we already unlocked the blacksmith last episode, which I'll link down below in the description, this is pretty simple to do. And the first thing we need to make is a charcoal kill, which requires stone. So let's go ahead and get him to craft that for us. Now get up. <laughs> what did he just say? And now we can put down our charcoal kiln just here. And then if we press E on it, what we can do is load it up with wooden logs and also we'll need some dirt. So to get dirt, it's very easy. Just come over here Get your pickaxe and just start digging some holes. And you're just going to add some dirt as you also terraform the environment. Now, if you get the top layer, that's where most of the dirt is. Otherwise, it would just be like grabbing stone. And don't worry, when you log out, this will reset. So don't worry about like ruining the appearance of the environment. And drop all of the 60 dirt we just mined into the charcoal kiln. And now, as you can see, there's a timer appears and it starts to generate charcoal. So we get 15 charcoal every five minutes. Now, while you're waiting for the charcoal to burn, what you can do is come over here to the trees and actually start chopping them because we do need some resin. And you get resin by chopping down trees like this one. You see, there's some resin just falling on the floor. So now the kiln is finished. We can come to the crafting section and we can see we have 15 charcoal, but it's just going to carry on burning the logs and dirt. So let's take the charcoal there and now we've unlocked some more recipes and we can talk to the blacksmith again and now we can build the forge with stone metal scrap charcoal and wooden logs now if you guys are wondering where to get metal scrap i have a video guide linked down below in the description you can get it from destroying metal items in towns or also killing the scavengers that's the best source of metal scrap in the game let's go ahead and craft that and as you can see, the forge is going to require charcoal and also metal scraps. And that's going to give us metal sheets, which are used to make armor and more advanced weapons. So after some time, you'll have lots of metal sheets that you can use to craft. So now we're going to go ahead and talk to the blacksmith again. And if we go down to armor, we can see that he'll actually make us rising fighter armor now the good thing about this armor set is that it gives you buffs to your character making them stronger unlike the fur armor set which doesn't give you any benefits at all this one does to craft it we need string animal fur resin and metal sheets which i've already shown you how to get but also the blacksmith must be sheltered so to make sure he's sheltered you need to build the summoning staff again and then just press tab to use it click on oswald and then you just need to make sure that he's inside. So we're going to put him right here. You can see he now counts as being sheltered. So now we can go ahead and craft items. So let's craft the armor set in full. There's also a rising fighter shield you can craft as well. So let's get that. And now I've run out of metal sheets. But we can make some scrap weapons. So I'm going to make the scrappy sword, which is a level 5 melee weapon. With wooden logs, metal scraps, and nails. So let's equip our new armor set and shield. As you can see, our character now has 103 physical resistance and 51 magic resistance, which isn't very important at this point in the game. We also have some skills to unlock. I'm just going to get endurance to start off with and then runner. And then I want to get the double jump perk, which I'm saving up for because it's so useful. I also made the glider and grappling hook, and I've got a guide on how to do that link down below in the description. Now, I made a little storage area under the stairs. Before we go on, we want to make sure that we store all of our resources in here. Because if we die, we lose everything in our backpack, but everything in our quick slot bar down here, we actually keep. So let's go ahead and eat some food to increase our health bar. And we're also going to drink some water as well. And now we're ready to explore. And I'm going to show you where to get the best legendary weapon early on in the game. It's a guaranteed location where it spawns. We've got to go all the way down this cliff edge over here. So you can see that's the ruined bridge over there, which we can now actually pass with the grappling hook. But instead, we want to go to the left here, directly west. And I can show you now we can use our grappling hook to actually get access to this new area. It is actually possible to run and jump across there, but um, we don't need to do that right now. Let's take these wooden arrows and bandages. Did I actually bring any bandages with me, which is a little bit foolish. 
And then right up ahead, we're going to find some enemies. So we can actually go ahead and sneak and take them out with a headshot, potentially. Or even blowing up these barrels here. Oh, I just missed and hit the wolf. Let's blow up the barrels. And then we can take him out. Ow. Here's our sword. There we go, he's dead. And we can loot him for some more meat. Nice and meaty. And if we use... Oh, hello. If we use those berries, we can actually heal ourselves as well to make sure we're at full health. Get Rex on. Let's go ham on this guy because he's got a ranged weapon and he can't respond to us. And now we're dealing some real damage compared to before. And as you can see, these scavengers drop loads of metal scraps so you can easily farm them. Now we blew up this entire place, but there are some things lying around now that you can loot. Like for example, these books, which you can get some old books from, which are useful later. We can also see some explosives on this pile, which we can shoot with an arrow here. And that's going to reveal some secret treasure which we can pick up. Let's go ahead and pick up that rusty sword. Now, if you do have a pickaxe, this thing right here actually gives you flint. So that flint stone can be used to make flint arrows, which are obviously more powerful. And then we can go and check upstairs, which hopefully is still intact. Oh my god, there's a hole through the floor. There's another chest just here, though. And some more wooden arrows. Take care with this new shipment from the valley. The merchant said it was highly volatile. Apparently explosives explode. Who would have known? <laughs> some of the lore in this game is actually pretty funny. And some things will actually send you on quests, so it's always good to read it. Now, there is a scavenger camp up there, but we don't want to go there right now. Instead, we actually want to go down this pathway to the southern north. Um, and we just want to follow it all the way around. I can see some um, wolves up ahead. We could probably avoid them by going to the left or sneaking past here. They might actually come and give us some trouble, though. We'll find out sooner or later. Now, we can obviously parry these guys as well by blocking just before they hit us, which I just failed to do. But as you can see, the game's, like, so much easier. Now I have full armor and I'm killing these weak enemies. I don't really have to focus on them accidentally killing me. So now we're going to go through this cave. And I have got a torch. And we're going to head up this uh, little ramp on the right-hand side here. It's a cave passage. And it does lead you through to the, the other side. Oh, there's a chest here. I didn't actually know that. Which we can... Oh, lockpick. Better take out this wolf then. We can parry one of them. Take him out. And then we take this guy out. Parry him. Get Rex on. And now, finally, I can open my chest. Oh, a fireball. Staff charge level 10. It has a mana cost, but um, pretty damn powerful thing to find early, to be honest. If you're not using those, you know, wizardry weapons, you can actually just um, deconstruct them for upgrade runes. So this is an enshrouded area, but we just got to work our way through this very linear cave to the end here. It's like someone abandoned a cart there. Um, and here we are. We want to go to the left specifically, but to the right, there's actually a flame altar. So let's go ahead and collect this. And that's going to give us a, a spark. Now, the spark can be used to upgrade your flame altar. After we grab the spark, we're going to head into this cavern. And on the other side, we'll pop out in another sort of open area of land. And now we have passed through the mountains. Let's see another location right ahead and a pathway leading to the north. If you actually look on the map, you can see this is where we currently are. That was the flame shrine we just walked past. And we're going to check out this location on the left here before we go any further down the pathway. But it's a pretty beautiful area. And right here, we're actually going to find some corn which we can cook. If some, some of them have corn, some of them don't give you anything. Some of them just plant fiber. Okay, this one right here, that's going to give me corn. Corn cob, there we go. So you want to harvest the alive plants. But if you go um, and look in your backpack, then you actually eat one of these. Plus one strength for 10 minutes. So basically, it just means you do more melee damage. So definitely worth having a few corn cobs. And if you grill it at the fire, you actually do even... Oh! even more damage. You actually get plus two strength instead. Okay, we want to go upstairs here. 
Um, I believe there's some chests in this room. Oh yeah, here it is. It's actually a rare chest, so... Oh, we got a level 3 hatchet, which is good. Not as good as our level 5 weapon, but it still does decent damage. And we can lockpick this chest, see what's inside. Some more wooden arrows, nice. Pop out the window there. And then we're going to go back to this pathway that we were on before. And you can actually see here's another little checkpoint, which we've now activated just here. And usually at these checkpoints, if you just loot the things around it, like there's a few little containers and stuff which you can smash. And they usually have like potions. So there's a great mana potion. We'll just take the berries instead. And then we're going to continue westwards on this path here. And check the map again. We kind of want to go all the way up here, basically, along this path that we're currently on. And also, if you guys have any honey, now's a really good time to eat some because it actually gives you insane stamina regeneration. So I would recommend, if you see any beehives and stuff, just grab those beehives and harvest the honey. Because um, it's just the best source of stamina regen in the entire game. Like, even in the late game, that's going to be super useful to you. So we're continuing on the pathway, and now we've come to what looks like some kind of obelisk thing. So let's go ahead and just jump down and glide here. The ancient obelisk. Now there's a little bit of lore down here. We would pretend to read them as children, but now the obelisks hide their truths. I was a fool thinking I could find a solution to my problem here. No one hears my prayers and I feel so tired. I wish you were by my side, brother. But if we activate the obelisk, it gives us some insight in a world destined for ruin. And it also, more importantly, adds several map markers. Several of these flame shrine locations have now been added to our map. So we can actually go and seek them out. We're actually going to drink some water. Oh, we already got some active. Never mind. Now we're going to head north. Um, there's a big cliff here, as you guys can see. And we want to drop off this cliff and sort of sail to the north using our wing glider. We're going to go across this valley here. You'll see another pathway in the distance over there. That's where we want to head to next. I haven't actually seen any honey trees yet or any beehives. But if we carry on down this pathway, on our left here... We're going to come across a secret little cave. And this is where we can find the legendary weapon. As you're about to see, there's a few enemies inside. Oh, I want to sneak. I think that could be a mine, but I don't know. So let's try and headshot this guy. He's also got some kind of ranged weaponry. We've actually stunned him there. Oh, okay. We've set off the explosive. That's good. And we've got one of them out here. Let's try and stun him. Oh, let me get my uh, weapon out. Here we go. There we go. Stun him. Take him down. I'm gonna go for his block and stun him again when he tries to attack. Now we can loot him for some more metal scraps and cloth, and then we can just try and bait the other guys out with our bow. I think we killed one of them with the explosive net there. If you go for headshots, it's a lot better than pressing tab. You see how much more damage that does with a headshot there? There we go. Uh, and he's got some scrap arrows as well. Actually better than flint arrows, you know. Um, I think I've got a torch somewhere. And there's a few traps, so make sure you deactivate them if you are coming in here. Then we can run inside. And this is the scavenger's stash. And this right here, this is actually a legendary loot box. And inside we have the Wailing Blade, a level 3 legendary weapon. And you can see it's quite dark right now, but if I get this sword out, it actually provides some light. So, no sword? Sword. And you can see there's another treasure chest that I can unlock here. And that. Some explosives. More metal scrap. Tons of stuff to search around here that you can loot. Alright, so after you're done looting the scavengers area, you can head back outside. Back into the sunlight. So we worked our way all the way to the northwest. And now we're here on the map of the scavenger's stash. As a point of reference as to where we are. So there's a pathway that goes back that way. But if we go directly north, we can see there's some other ruins up here. I want to investigate what this is before we get onwards. Looks like some kind of bandit encampment because I can see the palisade walls. Ancient Vault of the Alchemist. 
This is one of the companions we actually want to collect. We've leveled up to level 3 by discovering these locations. It's actually a very good way to level up discovering locations like this. So we want to free the alchemist now. Because he's pretty crucial for unlocking some of the new recipes and stuff. I'm going to get my bow out. I can see an arbalist of some kind up ahead. I can actually take him out from here. A few headshots like this. Oh, he's got a grenade one, so we need to make sure we use our dodge roll to avoid that. Like so. There we go. Loot him. Uh, metal scrap. We'll grab that. And now we can actually head into the building itself. I think this is another checkpoint right here, so let's grab that. We're going to test out this sword now. It does slightly less damage than our scrap sword, but we can obviously upgrade it, so that's good. Stun. When you get used to stunning them, honestly, it's just insanely powerful. Oh, obviously, if you don't block, they do a lot of damage. Oh, someone has got their arrows on me. You know what? We actually should go up there and just um, kill them ourselves. Boom. Surprise. Get wrecked, son. All right, let's loot him. You see how much scrap you're getting now, though? You know, like, just by killing these bandits, they have so much. There's another guy down here. We can just take him out with our bow. I don't think he, he can even get up here. Oh, there is a ladder. Man, there's lava surrounding this whole platform, though. Look at that. Right, let's just go and take him out with the sword, wherever he's gone. Where is he? There's one. Get wrecked, son. Oh, no, you don't. Come on, then. Hey, it's just like an easy version of Elden Ring, though, the powering in this game. I feel like they do need to make it harder. But I've only been playing this game for that long. And I'm just, I'm hitting them every time now, and it's a bit too easy. More stuff to loot in here, and we can go up. Oh, what? Oh, my God. Did you see how quick I climbed that staircase? That was crazy. Oh, my God. So much scrap and weapons as well. Dodge roll off there. Let's drink some more water and berries, and then we can head into what is the old sanctuary. Might be a boss in here, I don't know. We're now sheltered. There's two ways to go. We go the right way, obviously. Here's an enemy. Come on, then. Oh, God. Okay, there's another guy over there. Fine. I'm going to use my two handed weapon of it. Just test that out. I want to make sure that this arbalist isn't going to shoot me from behind. Die. Ow. Okay, he's dead. Almost. Are you dead? There we go. And you, come on. Stunned him. Ow. You're slowly whittling me down with your arrows, sir, and I do not like it. Okay, we've taken them all out, and then we can use our berries as well. And we'll actually eat our food, so we get a big health bar increase there. And now, we can go upwards into the actual sanctum itself. We've got our torch, or our weapon torch, lighting the way here, which is useful. So it should be somewhere around here. Here it is. Oh my god, there's even more enemies. Are you joking? I need a better bow. Right now, I just feel like this doesn't do any damage at all. Get wrecked, son. Come on, then. Hit me. Ow. Right, let's finish him off. Grab the loot. But as you can see, my sword's almost broken. So it's a really powerful weapon, but it's just... Like this little anvil here, you can use it to repair your equipment. You'll find these in dungeons now and again, so keep an eye out for those anvils. Very useful. And now we can awaken the alchemist. Balthazar the alchemist, who's the guy we read about in the books. He's the guy who basically created the technology to hide the people inside these uh, caskets. So many flint arrows here. Now the alchemist is going to unlock us a bunch of recipes, which is very useful. And now we can come upstairs, open these gates... 
to reveal a way outside. Look at this. Awesome. That's your secret chest on the right hand side there. So let's try and grab that one. So we're going to use this and then press right to cancel so we don't fall off the edge. And we can get an apprentice wand, level three. Let's just fly down here because I actually want to show you how the wand works. Oh no, you've got to jump across. Okay. So you've got to jump from here to here and then to... Oh! So jump from here to here and then to here. And then there's another chest up here. With some more explosives. So now let's fly off this balcony. I think there's another enemy down here. I can probably show you this. So yeah, you see this guy right here? Press tab and you can just use the, um, the wand to like range him like this. Doesn't have any ammunition that it uses up. And it's actually pretty powerful depending on your level. So wands, they look kind of stupid. I never really like wands, but like they're really powerful. Probably like one of the better weapons in the entire game. So I definitely recommend grabbing them and just having at least one with you. So now what we're going to do is fast travel back to home. And now it's the morning. We can talk to the blacksmith. So the blacksmith actually knows about the Wailing Blade. You claim the Wailing Blade. I forged it for her grasp before she left me. Fine, you may wield it in her place. Pierce the Shroud's heart, Flameborn. It is what my daughter would want. So it is his daughter's sword. Now since we have a bunch of weapons we don't actually need, what we can do is right click them and go to salvage. That little bracket says the number 9. And it's going to add nine runes to my inventory, which are used to upgrade weapons. So we're going to go ahead and salvage all the stuff we don't actually need. If you salvage a rare weapon, it gives you even more of those runes. And then if we talk to the blacksmith, we can then go at the top here to enhance equipment. If we click on the Wailing Blade, we can then press space to enhance it for 12 runes. And then again for 15. And now it's a level 5 weapon that does 17 damage. We can carry on enhancing it all the way up to level 8 if we want to. Now if we look at our altar here and say commune with the flame, we can upgrade the altar to extend the building range, or we can strengthen the flame, which increases the bonuses and increases the time we can spend in the shroud. To do that, we need resin, red mushrooms, bones, shroud liquid, spark, and animal fur. Now, the only thing I haven't told you where to get is shroud liquid. So obviously the red mushrooms, they are located all over this environment right here. So there's another one there. The shroud liquid can be found just down the hill in the shroud here. So let's go ahead and coast on down. And these little balloon looking things, if you collect them, you actually get shroud liquid. So just run around the environment collecting these little pustules. And as you can see, it's super easy to get loads of it. You only need five though, so there you go. So now we have everything we need to strengthen the flame to level two. My glow and warmth reach further into the darkness. Thank you, Flameborn. I am strong enough to protect your home should you choose to expand it. And you can upgrade it again to level three with some other materials here. So now we've unlocked the alchemist, we can also call him into the world. So if we go to crafting and make a summoning staff, we can press tab and then select Balthazar the alchemist and I always like to have all the characters right next to each other so you can talk to them at the same time. Hey. So we're going to summon him over here and speak to Balthazar. Let's ask him about carpentry. Another set of hands would be useful to us if we ever plan to expand the base. I, for one, could use more storage for my potion. I'd happen to know the location of another ancient vault. Why not look around? So he's just given us the location of the ancient vault for the carpenter, which is just here on the map. And the blacksmith earlier gave us the location of the ancient vault for the farmer over here. So that's a new quest, Eternal Magic. Huh? We are specks of dust in a whirlwind of stars, my friend. Do you dare reach out, wishing to grasp a piece of eternity? Perhaps obtaining an eternal spell would suit you. I know one was buried in an underground tomb alongside its dreadful master. You could use it to do a lot of good. So another quest to unlock eternal spells. And if we say craft, he actually now allows us to craft potions. So health potions, pretty crucial. And shroud survival flasks, which increase time in the shroud by two minutes. He also crafts level 5 ice bolts. He also makes level 8 wizard's clothing. So alchemical apprentice hats and all of these items that actually give you buff to your character's magical abilities. He also gives you access to the grindstone, which is made with stone and flint. Now to get flint, you can literally just come outside your house. You can see the starting base is just over there. If I turn around, you can see these ruins. And then if I go towards the uh, broken bridge there, and just to the right, 
you'll see there's a cliff edge and on that cliff edge there's actually tons of flint down the side we can just walk up this cliff around the side and get access to this flint pretty easy to do we just need to kind of mine like little platforms so we can work our way up the cliff and access the mining area. So as you can see, we've mined a little tunnel up here to the flint. And now we can actually start mining it. We should start seeing... Yeah, we go. Flintstone. So now we just need to get the flintstone for the grindstone. And all of this resource actually respawns whenever you log out. So you have unlimited flint here. Right, so now we've got everything we need. We can talk to uh -huh. the alchemist again. And now we can craft this grindstone. Let's just put it in the house like here. So all of those bones that I told you to collect, remember? They are now useful. And you can just throw them in here and it will start creating bone meal, which we need for potion crafting. Now if you have broken weapons, you can just press E on a workbench and it will automatically repair everything without you having to spend any resources. Make sure we eat some food. Now, our next quest is going to be to clear the elixir well. An overgrown pit spitting corruption and fumes into the air from below. Find the root of evil and eradicate it. So we need to go directly north over here to clear the elixir well. And it's right in front of me just here. The sun is just rising in the distance there. I think we're going to set sail over there. I'm going to use my honey to get an insane stamina regeneration. And here we go. I'm coming in hot, boys. It's like Mission Impossible or something. Gliding in from a distance. Let's just drop off down here. And we're in the shroud. I probably should have brought a shroud potion with me, just in case. But we need to get up to the top there. Um, and we need to get inside the shroud itself. Let's take this guy out. Come on, then. Oh, he hit me. Damn it. Wow, I'm so much more powerful compared to last time. We do want to loot these guys because we really want the runes and the shroud spores. They're going to be useful. Now we have the alchemist, we can use it to get um, shroud cores, which are like a better version of the shroud spores. So I think if we go down here, we can actually climb downwards into the belly of the beast, as it were, to destroy the shroud root. Let me jump off here. We've just got to be careful. We don't want to spend too long down here. There's going to be a boss fight. We want to take out this guy in good time. I can literally see the shroud root from here. I think I'm just going to fly over there and start going ham on it. Hopefully we don't aggro too many enemies here. I can see the boss. Here he is. I'm going to press tab to target him. Oh, okay. Ow, ow, ow. We're just going to dodge around him. Get that backstab damage, which is super effective. Ooh, we're going to have to dodge that blow because it stuns us, though. Oh, he's already dead. I think I may have upgraded my sword a bit too much. Runes and a guillotine weapon. We'll check this out in a bit, but we got to destroy this first. Maybe an axe. This does more damage. 18 damage. Yeah, so you need an axe to destroy the roof. That makes sense. There we go. We've destroyed the shroud down here. And now we can freely explore without that timer. We've also got another skill point. And I'm actually going to get Merciless Attack and Power Parry, which increases the enemy's stun bar gain on parry attacks, making them easier to stun. Now we can freely explore this area without any time limits. That was obviously the easier elixir well in the game to destroy, but uh... Ooh, Flask of the Fell, plus 20 stamina for 30 minutes. It's really good. So now we're going to head back up the stairs, and this area will be free of Shroud now for a couple of in-game... I think an in-game week it is. Oh, there's a chest on the way up. Okay, well, I almost missed that. Oh, a forest longbow. Climb out. But here we are. Let's take this dude out. Die. Get Rex up. Its brain has been replaced by Fungian slush, but it's still tremendously heavy. The face is permanently petrified with a bitter expression. <laughs> and then we have the Shroud Core, a stable form of energy. Burning it at the flame altar may protect against the Shroud. In the next episode, we're going to be unlocking another free craftspeople. And these people are going to give us access to more tools, weaponry, and armor sets that are going to allow us to unlock more gear that will let us progress the game even faster. So I'll link that episode here and in the description, and I'll see you there.